Happy New Year and welcome back to another episode of the Relationship Schools Smart Couple Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Gaddis, and I'm grateful to be here with you. I just want to thank everyone who's listening and has listened uh, since the beginning or just recently. If you weren't listening, I wouldn't be talking. All right. So thanks. And also thanks to your amazing reviews in iTunes. If you have not left a review yet, please do so. You could win a chance to get a hat here from the Relationship School or perhaps an Amazon gift card. Once a month in 2019, we'll be picking one person uh, who's left a review on iTunes and we'll be giving you some kind of gift. So uh, here is a an example of an awesome review on iTunes. This is from Elizabeth GB. Elizabeth says, being a couples therapy specialist myself, as well as a podcaster, I can tell you that I love this podcast. I listen to it regularly, and it never loses my interest. The host breaks down complex couples issues so that anyone can understand them and apply them to their own relationships. I highly recommend. Five stars. Bam. Elizabeth, thank you. Uh, What's up? I really appreciate you right now, fellow podcaster. Cool. Next time, leave your podcast so we can check it out. All right. Hopefully you are leaving some of that baggage behind in 2018. 2018 was intense for some of us. Big challenges. I know I had lots. I'm going to break that down in a future podcast. What I went through and lessons learned. I always take this time of year to, not always, the last few years, I have taken the time to review my previous year, lessons learned, failures, mistakes, uh, wins, accomplishments, victories, and I spend time on that so that I can plan for the next year. So I suggest doing something like that. All right. Okay. Uh, you'll notice that the we are enrolling the fifth round of the relationship school, and we switched our website to dot com relationshipschool.com. dot com. And if you go to .com forward slash DPIR, you can apply for this next round of the, re- the Relationship School. It's Deeper, the Deep Psychology of Intimate Relationships. That's the class you should have gotten in high school or college. To me, it's the very best class on relationships on the planet. And I'd be willing to argue with anyone on that. I just think it's the deepest, most robust course there is out there on relationships. And we get incredible results. You'll hear one of them in this episode. So if you want to apply, you have to apply. We interview every single person that comes into this course. Uh, it's interview only. It's application only situation, all right? Um, so if you want to apply, just go to relationshipschool.com forward slash DPIR, all right? Now, in this episode, I've got a couple friends of mine, Ted and Gabrielle, all right? These two are a loving, securely attached couple <laughs> and just really two sweet souls. I went to grad school with Ted. I met Gabrielle at a Stan Tatkin talk many years ago here in Boulder. And this is uh, Ellen and I, my wife, sit down with Ted and Gabrielle and we talk about partnership, attachment, the nervous system, and spirituality. Ted and Gabrielle share a vulnerable story of being in a spiritual community for many, many years and how it began to unravel when they noticed certain relational dynamics that were not being addressed. We bonded a little bit about this because I, as many of you know, was in a Buddhist community for many years and saw the same thing. You know, there's not, in the Buddhist community I was in, there wasn't a lot of relational development going on. You had a problem? Go meditate. So we're shedding light on some of the challenges that spiritual teachers and spiritual communities have when it comes to the brain, the nervous system, our our attachment system, and relational dynamics. There's just challenges. And we just want to educate you uh, from our experience, in particular to Ted and Gabrielle's experience, to help you navigate that, right? So it's a pretty lively, intense discussion about spirituality, attachment, and relationships. I think you're going to like it. Just let me share a quick bit about Ted and Gabrielle. Okay, Ted, like I said, he went to grad school at Naropa where we met. He was in my class, graduating class. Uh, So he also got a master's degree in biophysical anthropology from Harvard. 
Um, the guy's a lifelong learner. Okay, he, he runs international trainings. He's written a couple books, Instinctual Intelligence and Men, Myths, Lies, and Reality. Um, the guy studied Tibetan Buddhism for a long time. So he's, he's an amazing guy, all right? Um, he's the founder of personalpowercoaching.com, if you want to check that out. It's in the show notes. And Gabrielle, his wife and partner, uh, she's a psychotherapist in private practice specializing in couples therapy, trauma, and attachment therapy, and chronic illness counseling. She works in Louisville, Colorado. She is a trained PACT therapist. She's studied with Dr. Stan Tacken for the last seven years. Uh, she's got received uh, advanced training from the Sensory Motor Psychotherapy Institute and Brain Spotting. Um, Ted also studied at the Sensory Motor Psychotherapy Institute, and so did Ellen and I with Pat Ogden, Pat Ogden and crew. Okay. Um, Gabrielle used to be a play therapist uh, for many years, working with uh, families with traumatized kids and their families. Um, she has a ton of experience there. Uh, she's been a keynote speaker. She's also uh, teaches therapists currently. She runs classes on personality disorders. And I'm going to get her to come speak to our coaches on that exact subject soon. And her website is couplescounselingboulder.com. Okay. Amazing people, these two, and you're going to learn a lot from them. So without further ado, let's get into it. Here's Ted and Gabrielle. Welcome back to the Relationship Schools Smart Couple Podcast. I'm really psyched to have several amazing guests here on the show today. So what's up, guys? Hi. Hi. Hey, Jason. Hi. All right. So Ellen is here as sometimes my co-host once in a while. Yes. Good to have you back. Yes. Good to be here. Yeah. And then Ted and Gabrielle, mm-hmm. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Will you guys just so the listeners like, who are these guys? Like, will you just give us a quick um, bio? Who are you? Sure. That kind of thing. Okay. Why don't you go ahead, dear? Okay. Ladies first. Well, I'm Gabrielle Yusatinsky, married to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm a couples therapist in private practice uh, in Louisville, Colorado. And um, and what else can I say? I, uh, I run trainings for therapists um, and I'm starting a, a digital education institute for therapists. Um, and really love talking about relationship with people. So, yeah. Cool. Welcome. Thank you. Well, I'm Ted Usatinsky. Um, I am a coach primarily. I also consider myself an educator. Uh, along with my wife, we're building an online uh, digital education business. Um, I used to uh, travel throughout the world. I wrote books. I did workshops, a lot of one-on-one coaching and, and groups. And now um, not wanting to travel so much. We're uh, at home more and trying to reach a global audience, but primarily through uh, the, the internet. And uh, I love it. I, I love teaching about uh, my, my coaching method called personal power mastery, uh, teaching people to be more confident and more confident in relationship. And also, I got to say how much I've learned from this woman <laughs> about relationships. And um, uh, it's a real blessing to to have parallel path with someone who's just as dedicated to their craft and profession as I am to mine. And so we share a lot of stuff, yet we each do our own thing. Mm-hmm. So it's a, I think it's a really great match. And I know that's similar that's for cool. both of you. So. It is similar. Yeah. 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 Cool. And let's just yeah. name where we all met so that we... Had- like Ted and I, you went, you and I went to grad school together. I bet we, you've, we've known each other the longest, actually. Yeah. I think back in two thousand three. I think two thousand two. Uh, two thousand two. That long, yeah. 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 Wow, wow, sixteen years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't realize it. Yeah. Even that. Ted yeah. and I went to Naropa together. It was like your fifth degree, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the Gosh. more personal ones that uh, you know formed great relationships and. Um, yeah, so uh, I've seen your progress, uh, been a big fan of yours, for, and w- notice what you're doing and the progression, and you're kind of still the same core Jason I've always known. Huh, cool. <laughs> I was falling apart then, but the real me was emerging slowly. <laughs> yes. And how about you guys? Like, um, And then I met you, I think, at Stantec and yes. a mini workshop. Right. Oh. I saw you with your beautiful little children uh-huh. at the time, who were oh. much much smaller at the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's where I met you. Awesome. And then yeah. you and I were 
I guess we were in training we together. We were in training together, yes. And I had sort of just started with Stan and you'd been studying with him for a while. Yep. And I'd already heard your name. I kind of knew who you were, but I hadn't met you until yes. then. Right. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then recently I've been taking one of your courses mm -hmm. and so I've been getting to know you that way too, which has been awesome. That's right. Yeah. yeah it's been great mm -hmm. having you in the class. Yeah. So. My, my pleasure as well. Yeah. You sort of feel like somebody I've known for a long time yeah. in a lot of different ways. Like it's hard yeah. for me to think of, wait, where did I meet Ellen? Right. Yeah. It's <laughs> true. Yeah. I, feel, so. I get what you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. And how, um, just to, again, to get to know you guys a little bit, how long have you known each other, been together? Um, yeah, kids, no kids, that kind of thing, just so people yeah. have a demographic here. Well, I could tell a little bit of the story how sure. we met there. Yeah. Um, uh, we belonged to the same spiritual school that was primarily focused in, in Boulder, Colorado here. And um, I was actually married to someone else at the time. Um, we were uh, We joined the teaching program for the... Uh, the spiritual school, and I got to know her that way. We were, uh, and a lot of times, you know, I mean, the fact that she's obviously very beautiful that didn't escape me. But you know, um, what really galvanized things for me over time was just talking with her. And she'd come up to me and like at the break or at lunch or something, she'd say, <laughs> you know, something's like just not right here. Like, can we? And we just would start talking, you know, and she'd just like just download all this incredible mm -hmm. information about attachment and things she was learning. Mm -hmm. And I was on a parallel path learning about trauma and these things we were saying. And I just would go, yeah, this woman is really brilliant. And, and now, I mean, she's smart, but she really cares. Like, she's upset by this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's still the thing today. We wake up two o'clock in the morning and I'm so, honey, you know, I've just been thinking about this thing. We still talk about the same things and it's still burning in us to, you know, mm -hmm. be passionate about it. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, when you meet someone who's on that level of, of life commitment to something, that's that's really special. Mm -hmm. That's sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were friends for a really long time before we got together, like 10 years. We mm. were friends and we were um, part of this spiritual school and we were, so we would see each other on retreats. We were living in different um, states and everything, but we would just see each other at these retreats and we would always have, and we were both in relationships. I was in a committed relationship uh, during that time. And, um, and we would always just have these really interesting conversations and I was, kind of aware of what he was doing professionally with his business um, at the time and, you know, working with the nervous system and helping people kind of with, like, performance, optimizing their performance at, uh, at work and um, personally. And um, I was working with children as a play therapist at the time mm. and really um, studying trauma and how that affects children and, and working with that. So we would have these very interesting discussions kind of about our our profession and um, and I always you know felt like very a lot of love and warmth for Ted and we but we were just you know in different living in different universes um, personally mm -hmm. and so and then at a certain point all of that shifted and this kind of window just opened up and we got together as a mm -hmm. couple mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and how long ago was that that was uh, four or five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it was really yeah. like that was the first time in my life that, and um, I don't know about for you actually, but I mean just that that to have had like a long friendship with somebody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that then eventually turned into a romantic relationship was, I think, a really different experience in a really good way. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of advantages to that. Yeah. You know. Sure. Yeah could vet each other better that way. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Cool, and kids? I have a child mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. my first marriage. He's 16 now, mm -hmm. and uh, he's in in um, school in Israel, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. So he's abroad having an amazing experience. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, and Ted doesn't have any. No, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, it just helps us to get the listener kind of like, who are, who are these people? Yeah, yeah. where are you coming from? Yeah, where are you it's coming cool. from? Yeah. And um, he's been an amazing, amazing stepdad, though, oh, cool. mm. to my son. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I could see that for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. We talked, uh, we all hung out recently. 
and we thought we started to dive into this conversation around spirituality. You guys were a part of a spiritual school. Ellen's been a part of a yoga community for what two decades, mm-hmm. about, mm-hmm. and I was in a meditation Buddhist community for quite a while. And we got talk got to talking because we all geek out on attachment stuff mm-hmm. about spirituality and how the spiritual frames sometimes are challenging for partnership and they have some advantages and some challenges so we i if i remember right we all agreed that we would you know talk about this and hit record (laughs) yes so that's that's kind of what we're doing today today. (laughs) right yeah yeah you think okay um so i thought it'd be useful of like just um to maybe start with what maybe what we all struggled with, with whatever spiritual teachings we were getting, where it started to bump up against yeah. relationship, where it was starting to go, wait, what's going on here? Or this isn't working or isn't adequate or something. It mm-hmm. might be an interesting place to start. I'm open to starting somewhere mm-hmm. else. But mm-hmm. no, I think that's a good Because again, I, I think it'd be great if we could serve the listener here, if there's some people in uh, the, because this is a podcast largely dedicated to people who are into growth and development and that certainly includes people who are into spirituality oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and so we thought we'd help you guys um perhaps with just some of our own experience and stories mm-hmm. mm. yeah cool yeah accumulated experience we have a lot of that yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. yeah and i'm aware of just how much more we could talk about oh, just yeah. with the amazing yeah. experience you guys have yes. so we're just we're picking a kind of a niche today and maybe we'll have you guys back and we'll yeah. drill down into some other component yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I could jump in. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, I think it might be useful to actually say some some of the, the, the positive things I've experienced on spirit, different spiritual paths that it really helped me at different junctures of my life, and I'm mm-hmm. profoundly grateful to the the like those areas of human consciousness that it uh, alerts us to and opens up. And for me, um, I was deeply into Tibetan Buddhism. I started, I had serious graduate training at Harvard in the, you know, learning the language, translating texts, living in Tibet for a while, studying, doing all the practices, the whole nine yards, very committed. And um, part of what it offered to me was like, you know, it's fundamental premise, the Four Noble Truths, all life is suffering and there's a way to get out of suffering. Mm-hmm. And I had an early uh, environment. My family was really pretty great until uh, I was about 15. My sister had a very serious medical uh, incident. She had brain surgery and was left paralyzed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was just, you know, I was more concerned with sports and girls than I was, you know, death and hospitals and mm-hmm. all the stuff that I had to confront out of nowhere. No preparation, no anything. Wow. So uh, the, the appeal of, of, that kind of spirituality that you can meditate and transcend and feel these states of bliss and relief was incredibly important to me to to get a get a relief from that suffering Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and i think Mm -hmm. also just to add something Mm -hmm. to your experience (laughs) that you've shared before is that like because you had this early encounter with death Mm -hmm. you know because his sister was really um hanging on the the edge of life for mm-hmm. a very long time mm-hmm. yeah and, and so, then periodically uh, even after she recovered it would be, be you know every time i'd come home it's like oh my god what happened to Joni? like mm-hmm. something you know we have to go back to the hospital she might die it was literally that for you know 20 years wow. Wow. Yeah. right and so i think that's also part of what opened him up to sort of like ideas of life beyond this world was mm-hmm. that in, mm-hmm. in a True. way i think way yeah. too early in life for him yeah. he was kind of up against these ideas um about life and death that you know no 15 year old should ever have to think about that right. stuff mm-hmm. right um, so that's yeah. how i see that um mm-hmm. in terms of like yeah. part of what yeah. activated that interest for right. you and yeah. then then so with all the benefit that, that and relief i experienced and intrigue and, and development concentration a lot of positive things about studying any path deeply and committedly and and repeatedly mm-hmm. um the feedback I got from people I was in relationship with, my family, my friends, like, yeah, you seem like a pleasant guy, but, you know, you, when it comes time to doing the dishes or just, you know, um, showing up for the basic things, you're kind of like, well, I'm going to go meditate. Mm-hmm. And so I began to notice, hey, there's, there's, a, there's a gap here. I, I feel great when I'm meditating, mm-hmm. but, you know, I'm looking at the faces of people around me and they're not always that happy with me. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Wow. No, and this is in my 20s, so that's, yeah. you know, how it began to register that, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Your brain wasn't cool. fully formed yet. <laughs> yes. I'm still developing. Yeah, that excuse. Yeah. Yes. I still use that when it came. Still developing. Honey, my, I'm still developing. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what led me, I think, then to seek out. I started reading a lot more about developmental psychology yeah, and more interested mm-hmm. in okay, what what's this other side of life that apparently I'm not dealing with that well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. I want to come back to that. Yeah. Yeah. And I like, I like this, the word where you started, like, I'm curious how, how, for you, how you got into spirituality. Well, it's hard to think of a time when it wasn't really a part of my life. My, my parents were both yogis and I grew Mm. up partly on an ashram. Uh, and my parents had a, you know, um, I guess she was a Western teacher who had, but she was for all intents and purposes, a a Swami and, Mm -hmm. um, in an Indian school. And so, um, so that whole sort of side of life was around from the time I was very little. And, um, and uh, so I kind of also came of age, like during the New Age movement, sort of, you know, in the 90s. And, um, mm-hmm. and so the, it was just always there. And I got into meditation really young, like around 16 and, um, and uh, you know, going to like, various different kinds of groups and I really explored a lot of different things um, in terms of different kinds of spiritual communities and and went very in depth in a lot of different a lot of different areas you know Mm -hmm. and um, so I had this kind of like innate fascination with with sort of finding like the deeper nature of life Mm -hmm. from a pretty early age some people say that's genetic I'm sure you've I've heard about that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so eventually I ended up um, in the diamond approach. And that's where I met Ted. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I was, I was drawn to that because it was kind of a more modern take on spirituality. It wasn't trying to fit people into kind of traditions that were, had, had, um, kind of emerged a long time ago and this felt like a more a more modern kind of appropriate and it tries to incorporate a lot of modern psychology right Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. Yeah. so it's kind of blending traditional spiritual practice and orientation with insights from modern depth psychology and Mm -hmm. and psychoanalysis and so forth so so that felt uh like that addressed that sort of need at least it was what i was looking for was something that would kind of bring in the psychological component that wasn't just going to be like a meditation path or a, you know, a practice on that level, but actually um, help me, you know, deal with my stuff, but in a sort of a more spiritual context, Framework, you yeah. can say, yeah. right? Because um, prior to that, it had always been like two separate things, right. you know, explicitly, right. right? So, yeah, so that's where we met mm-hmm. and um and started noticing the cracks in our accumulated history of spiritual exploration saying, yeah. you know, something something is really missing. Something's not being yeah. integrated. Yeah. It's not, not only in each other, but we could see it in our community like why are people just having all these massive relationship problems and mm-hmm. um yeah. Yeah, it just wasn't the type of development we pictured possible. Something was missing. Right. Mm-hmm. And that was really one of the main problems to come back to your original question, which now I can't remember what you said, but the original sort of answer that I had was that like there were a lot of problems with relationship in spiritual community. And that was yeah. really where you started to see things like you're saying like the cracks open up was that people were sort of professing states of realization and if you do this then you're going to develop to your full potential and so forth but we were just seeing so many problems with the way people were relating to each other Mm -hmm. within the community and then also in their own personal lives just people not able to really make um, progress with those basic Attachment issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's where we really started to feel like something really important is not happening here. Mm -hmm. And it seemed kind of across the board, like in all the spiritual communities that we had been involved in. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's a good summary. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, and you guys have yeah. so much collective experience with exactly. spirituality at that point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, between us, all the different traditions we were deeply involved in, I think that's a pretty fair sample of what's, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, not comprehensive, obviously, but uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like, oh, like, you know, we tried 18 different things. We found one shining great example of perfection. It was like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cracks here, cracks there. Yeah. Not so yeah. much. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So you saw people reaching more, like expanding in their um, states of consciousness, it sounds like, on, the, on their cushion or in their practice. Mm-hmm. But you saw no real change in their personal life in their day to day like you're saying yeah. the dishes and the faces of the people that I'm seeing mm-hmm. every day yeah. and and what did you guys come to was missing there I'm curious what your yeah well you I felt. think I think part of what um what what helped us come to what was missing was the fact that both of us were so engaged in studies outside of the school that we were at the spiritual school because we were you know, I was studying with Stan Tadkin and, mm-hmm. and um, just involved in sort of the whole, all of this research that had kind of blossomed yeah. in the last 20 years around interpersonal neurobiology and Dan Siegel and Alan Shore and all mm-hmm. of these. Um, yeah, that was it for me with Alan Shore and affect regulation was mm-hmm. my you know, mm-hmm. teaching people about high performance. It basically is all about regulating your emotions and your instincts. Mm-hmm. and bringing them to an optimal zone of performance. And I found uh, Alan Shore's work just to be so illuminate, like what goes wrong with the development of the self, identity, character, yeah, based on nervous system development. So we had a bit of a common language right. professionally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, they say like, uh, I mean, I don't know if you guys ever heard this, like in the, in the spiritual schools or communities that you were involved in. But one thing that they used to say to us was, you know, it's really important that if you choose this as your path, like you shouldn't be studying all this other stuff at the same time. Like just, if this is your thing, It'll be just, confusing. just choose it yeah. and stick with it, right? But neither of us were ever really the people, the kind of people who could do that. Like we yeah. were always, <laughs> yes. we were always looking at as many different lenses yeah. as yeah. we possibly could. And I yeah. think we both had a sort of inherent skepticism uh, about like, well, is this... Well, you know, reality is more mm-hmm. complex than any model than any one person or school yeah. can nail it all down into. Yeah. yeah. And, you know. Right. And so I think at a certain point, like, yeah, there is a problem with starting to look through, look, open too many, like, look at things through too many different lenses simultaneously. Like, it can really open up your, your oh, yeah. vision, but it can also make it impossible to buy in to something mm-hmm. yeah. right. when you see it. Like in a larger way. Yeah. Right, yeah. but if something is screaming, as we're both professionals, and the, in the last two decades, the research mm-hmm. on attachment and neurobiology and mm-hmm. the importance of interpersonal regulation, mm-hmm. you, you just know there's this, I can't ignore that much research, reality, yeah. evidence, yeah. Yeah. Right. and still Science. be true to my Science, yeah. Right. That's, I think that's what they call it. <laughs> yeah. <days>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I think it's an interesting question. Uh-huh. Like, you know, I think there is value in closing doors and deciding, like, this is my path and this is what I believe and I'm going to go deep with this particular mm-hmm. perspective or teacher or viewpoint or whatever it is. Um, there's, that has its own value, yeah. Yeah. right? But there's also a great loss there, which is that, you know, you then have to close doors to things that, that might actually otherwise have be very, um, just open up your, your spirit in a totally mm-hmm. new way that you couldn't, you couldn't access otherwise. And, and that's really yeah. kind of a blessing right. and the curse of the modern world. We have access yeah, to so I mean. much teaching, so much global wisdom, so much science, and, and we have so much access to it that when do you, you know... Uh, yeah, when do you choose? Yeah. yeah. Because there's you, so many options. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you like dig a lot of like shallow holes versus like one kind of deep hole? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's sort of one of the mm-hmm. the disadvantages of that. But I think there are some people like us who just we couldn't uh, we couldn't stop ourselves. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah, <laughs> like like yeah. we had we had to we had to find out we yeah. had to know. And I, I think it does have a lot to do with the time, like you're saying, like the time in history that we are all living in, where there has been this explosion of new knowledge about neurobiology and about the nervous system and attachment and like yeah we just we're sort of products of that in a certain mm-hmm. way yeah. you know yeah. yeah yeah 
Yeah, it's yeah. hard to turn away from. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just the, yeah. And I'm curious to, to bring you in with this mm -hmm. because you, in a way, did choose one path and went really deep and are still going deep, well, right? But I, it's, it's different, though. It's different because it's, I don't feel like I've chosen one because there's mm. always at least been two, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, which psychology is one. But there's like a lot that there's a lot of different like streams that f feed that um, river for me. You know, I don't mm -hmm. I haven't just picked like one um, theory of psychology or something. So a lot of different pieces there. But then also with yoga, I have really chosen one um, particular practice, yeah. although I still will go to other classes and study with other teachers and go outside of it. And I feel like that was a strength of my original yoga teacher was was the support for that like he always brought in uh buddhism you know which is totally different practice different teachings but it was he always felt like it was you're gonna have a richer experience with bringing in other perspectives so that's always been there mm -hmm. but i haven't yeah i mean there's a part of me it's like yeah i want to study anthropology and sociology like there's all these other things um but i i felt like my kind of where I realized that spirituality was limited for me in relationship um, was when I dated one of my yoga teachers and it really ended up being a not good experience <laughs> to say the least, I guess. And I, I realized later I had gone into that thinking, well, he's this experienced yoga teacher, like surely he knows how to do relationship well or will like this will be different than other things I've experienced and it, it really wasn't it was really kind of a it ended kind of sadly and like there was no room to grow at all as a as a partnership and and that I actually chose that year to write my master's paper on integrating spiritual philosophy with attachment theory because I felt like <laughs> I <love it>. <laughs> you know he was like my project in a way <laughs> um, really sp spurred this thing in me like oh you can't you can't just grow spiritually, uh, or you can, you can grow spiritually, but that doesn't mean you're going to grow developmentally. And that to me felt really important. Like I really am someone who wants both. I'm like, I want to, I want to develop myself just on that human level, the, the doing the dishes and the working out an argument level and the, and the consciousness level too. And so that was really my mm -hmm. personal experience. It wasn't so much with my community. It was more in this, I felt like I was part of a, a decent community it was sort of a loose community but um probably what protected us from more of that more mm -hmm. of the in in their personal struggles but um it was really around realizing that that you know one doesn't mean the other and you you could maybe do a lot of developmental work but not have a, a big view on your life that gives it meaning and richness that i wanted to so i, I really wanted both so yeah and you also weren't going to yoga to work out your relationship problems and you weren't looking to yoga to help you solve those problems. No, no. I mean, I was looking, it was helping me know myself, yeah. but it really was, you know, it could only go so far with how to actually help me, especially now in a long-term partnership. There's, there's so much more to learn than just what yoga philosophy has for me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I Did went to, I went to... Buddhism and it really taught me how to be with my experience. I didn't know how to be with my experience You know just to sit with myself was really that was a huge gift and I didn't know it at the time but I was also looking to Buddhism and the spiritual community to, to like why to, to kind of work all my psychology stuff out and relational dynamics and so I started to get pretty frustrated because that wasn't happening but that was me putting kind of too much pressure or responsibility on this tradition yeah. you know mm -hmm. as teacher and mm -hmm. um and we had you know like you i was seeing cracks of just like what well, this teaching okay it makes sense but it doesn't make sense off the cushion over here when these mm -hmm. two people are fighting like what's up so i started to get pretty curious mm -hmm. and l slowly lost interest over time yeah. but it was foundational for me to be with myself mm -hmm. yeah yeah Pardon me, here's a quick interruption from the Relationship School about our nine-month training. I want you to be there. If you're serious about going to the next level in 2019, now is the time. 
Okay, check out what Ali said uh, recently about her experience. I can cry. I feel a lot more um, just connected to myself. I feel like I'm learning how to get out of my victim place, um, both in my story about myself and my story about my relationship and with my partner. Um, so I, I feel like this course has been so eye-opening for my growth in the way that I can connect to myself and connect to people, um, whether it's my partner or my coworkers um, or just people I meet at the store. Um, and I'm leaving with not only reassurance of myself and seeing where I can grow in my journey, um, I'm also leaving with such a beautiful community and I feel like I've created a family over these nine months that can really support me and I can support them. Whoa. How about that? Um, Allie had an incredible experience and move is moving on to RC one. Okay. Meaning she's going to train to be a relationship coach to help others. Cause she was so deeply impacted and she worked hard at it and gave it her all. If you're interested guys, please come hang with us, play with us and join us. You must apply and be interviewed. Go to relationshipschool.com forward slash D P I R. And we'll see you in there. All right. Back to Ted and Gabrielle. So if we bring in what we, not this explosion you guys talked about, right? Of all this neuroscience and attachment yeah. and just all the awesomeness that's out right now around the brain and nervous system. How did you make the transition into, um, I guess, out of that community and into like this being a vital part of your life and how you live and also how you work with people and yeah. Shall I uh, sure. venture in? A yeah. lot to say about that. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's hard. It, it was incredibly hard because we had both, what, about 15 years, give or take a few, been a part of a community, uh, a tradition, a culture yeah. that you just accept that these are your friends and you're going to meet several times a year. And this is how you talk and this is how you relate to your experience and relate to each other. And um, I mean, for me, half of like I could, you know, just go to a retreat and just say, hey, I'm doing a new project now. And I'd get five people all over the world to like, hey, come over here, we'll host a workshop. And, you know, it's just so easy to mm. uh, live, to prosper, really, um, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, mm. professionally, personally. And it felt great to have that support. And on the other hand, there became truth this evident to us that we just couldn't live with, couldn't support, couldn't abide by, couldn't, especially as being teachers in that school, being told, no, here's how what you do with your students and be like, no, I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. I know that's harmful to that person. Mm -hmm. And we would just have gut-wrenching discussions yeah, it about it. it. Yeah. And I think that's what really brought yeah. it to a head is, is yeah. are we all, if we're going to teach in this school and, you know, uh, be proponents of what they advocate, we couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And we began, you know, really, because we're both scholarly, thinking, okay, well, look at the psychological foundations of this school. It's interesting. Um, every single person they talk about is much more on the side of individual psychology. There was, wasn't basically a word about attachment, mm -hmm. relationship, interpersonal neurobiology, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I think might as well, it's a public record. I went to a... Uh, uh, lecture sort of debate between Dan Siegel and the founder of this school out in California. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And it was That's appalling to yeah. see my guy up there talking about, oh, well, you know, uh, and, and Dan Siegel being like, I'm so curious about what you guys do. And he was so open and genuine. And, <laughs> you know, oh, how do you account for all this neurobiological evidence? And, and the founder of this school was like, we don't need evidence. We don't need your evidence, Dan. It was the most arrogant thing I've ever seen. Mm. I mean, frankly, from a spiritual person. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the first thing I did I was call watch you. That. <laughs> <laughs> Is that on YouTube? You called me. It might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. yeah. Wow. So. So, and I was like, well, I, I, I do need the evidence. 
yeah. I do have to account for that because I, I find it to be true. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, it was a big, big crisis point for us to say, despite all the time and money we invested, we got to um, seek our own answers. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that, that took, if I didn't have her, I couldn't have done it. Mm-hmm. I, or I, it would have been hell. Let's and I, feel I don't know, I could have survived. I, yeah. I feel the same way yeah. about mm-hmm. Ted. I mean, there it would have been just so unbelievably excruciating to leave um that Mm. to leave a spiritual community Mm -hmm. is just like i understand why people don't do it even when they see that there are major problems it's um it's it's just cutting a cord on a very fundamental level Mm -hmm. and it was just yeah it was really deeply deeply painful Mm -hmm. and the fact that we left together was actually i think what enabled me to be able to do that yeah 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 i still have friends we have friends in that in that community who who see all the same things that we see Mm -hmm. but they just they can't bring themselves to leave Mm. um because it's it's just a loss yeah. Yeah. Well, that speaks to the power of relationship. Right. Yeah. It does. <laughs> yeah. Right. You don't want to lose. Yeah. You don't want to lose. Yeah. I don't want to lose my community. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Very... Yeah. And it wasn't like we had. Oh, we found a new girl. Let's just go there. Yeah. We had to be alone. Yeah. And be right. alone together. Right. Mm-hmm. What What is true here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not know and yeah. and yeah. be in that space together. That was a tough place to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'd say that's one thing that being with Ted, you know, it, yeah, it, it's what allowed me to like take a step that I think would have been ext- like really almost impossible mm-hmm. to take. And I, and I feel that way, even like moving forward in life now together, I feel like we're both taking steps, you know, professionally as, um, together that, that are really pushing both of us, like to put ourselves out there to, mm-hmm. you know, um, like acknowledge or sort of step into our capacity in mm-hmm. a certain way. Yeah. That is really hard to do. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you know, when you are doing it like with the person you love and there's like a real ground of yeah. support, yeah. it's unbelievable what <laughs> totally. people can do. Oh yeah. It's really incredible. Yeah. I, it's yeah. so underestimated, you know, yes. the power that that gives an individual in yeah. life. Agreed. And, and also and, and not uh not to know, to face uncertainty together, yeah. to to question these things and not have easy answers because our exp- accumulated life experience isn't going to just, oh, well, it'll just all work out or, you know, yeah. let's just meditate more or, yeah, <laughs> you know, right. pretend it doesn't exist. It's like, no, we're going to be together asking these questions mm-hmm. and looking, you know, looking for yeah. friends, looking, yeah. are you asking these questions as more when we get right. together, what do we talk about more the questions we have about things? Right. You know, Here's the wisdom I've right. learned. Listen up, folks. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I love hearing about that. Yeah. yeah. I have a lot of curiosities, yeah, but I ahead. want to give you space yeah, to go ahead. dive in. Oh, go ahead. Good. Okay. Um, Did you have something more to say? I, well, I, yeah. I well, I just, well, I want you to, if you have yeah. things you want to say or ask or whatever. Um, Why don't you go and then I'll. Well, I was just going to say, like, it, it. I think in terms of this explosion that we mm-hmm. were talking about, you mm-hmm. know, um, like really a big part of that, I think, is, is a paradigm shift um, toward development, growth, growth of consciousness in relationship Mm -hmm. rather than as a solitary path Mm -hmm. i like that and that that is really like a paradigm shift Mm -hmm. like the things that we care about if we're going to use relationship as a way of really growing um are different because what we're really caring about is like the quality of the contact between us Mm -hmm. and the agreements that we have mm-hmm. and the principles that we live by yeah. as yeah. a system. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, yeah. you know, when we're just working with ourselves, it's, um, it's just. Yeah. Well, I, we were just talking about this morning. Uh, mindfulness. Most people think, oh, I'm mindful. I'll pay attention to my breath and be able to wear my body mm-hmm. and everything. We didn't find any mention of the term relational mindfulness. Dan Siegel, I think about uh, four or five yeah. years ago, introduced it in a book, and a few other people have mm-hmm. picked it up. He, I think he called it embedded relational mindfulness. 
But isn't it amazing that it took humans this long to come up with even the yeah. term relational mindfulness? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is amazing. When it's like, wow, that could be something we could be mindful of also. Yeah. yeah. It just with the same intensity and, and, and right. potential for development as the introspective. Right. Well, and, side of mindfulness. And Dan's even definition of the mind is it's a relational yeah. thing. It's yeah. this relational capacity mm-hmm. you know, yeah. mm-hmm. between us. Yeah. Well, and I like how you guys are describing something that seems, I mean, all of this seems really potent and important. And this idea that you're doing more together than you could have as individuals, you know, and I think you hear that out there, like we're, we're stronger together than apart, but the the way we're all brought up in this culture is no you got to do as much as you can on your own yeah. and it's all about your own identity mm-hmm. and your own development and people are going to hold you back actually your relationships yep. are going to hold you back and yep. and that's so not i think that's a you're that's not the experience you're having and yeah neediness is yeah. like sort of like right oh, right, right. Like, yeah. it's yeah. a really bad word like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so it is so you're just i i think you're it seems like in my world you're speaking to just how we just are as humans, like just the truth of us as human animals and how to, and when we really harness that truth and how we just are, how we operate best, we're, we're just functioning on more levels altogether mm-hmm. versus trying to override our need, neediness or yeah. dependencies or our, how impacted we are by each other and trying to just rise above that actually, we can't jump as high, we can't do as much. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a, mm-hmm. it is a paradigm shift yeah. for people. I mean, it was, it has been for me too, just being in long-term relationship and babies and like figuring out like actually, oh, this is actually giving me energy. Like just having the visceral experience of that versus, um, wanting to be alone and apart from them. So I could have energy. I just, that, that really flipped for me mm-hmm. when nice. when I mm-hmm. was immersed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it make, makes me wonder, like, what, what is the what is the shift in someone's consciousness to go from I to we mm-hmm. to see to make that leap? Because it feels like a leap the way you I hear yeah. you guys talking about it. Yeah, I think I think you nailed this with your uh, how how this kind of spiritual and cultural attitude ties to attachment styles. What did I say about that? <laughs> Nail it. Nail it for us. Let's hear it. Okay. <laughs> no pressure. Right yes. Um, right. I mean, you know, I, th- I think one thing that's really helpful to kind of parse out is that um, I know you guys have talked about attachment styles on your show, mm-hmm. you know, quite a bit. And um, that, that there really are, when we come from a uh, family where that, that, produces what we'd call an avoidant attachment mm-hmm. style where you know there, it's a low contact family where there's not a lot of um, physical touch and, and attachment behaviors like hugging kissing and rocking and things like that and um, tends to produce uh, an attachment style that is oriented away from people mm-hmm. yeah. and tends to produce what we call auto regulation which mm-hmm. is a way of managing one's energy by oneself Mm -hmm. rather than by by using another person Mm -hmm. simply because there wasn't another person there consistently um to really relate to and um and so that produces this kind of avoidant uh attachment adaptation um self-stimulation self-soothing activities that you know you like to do by yourself, you like yeah. to play by yourself, yeah. right? right? And so I think that spiritual practice can be very appealing to mm. people with that particular yeah. attachment adaptation, that mm-hmm. avoidant or island attachment, um, like Dr. Tadkin talks about. Yeah. Um, meditating by yourself, kind of looking at the spiritual path as a solitary path mm-hmm. um, is something that, that sort of lines up with that that particular Absolutely. way of being yeah. mm-hmm. right and so when you when you ask that question like what is that turn yeah. from that solitary mode mm-hmm. into a more interactive mode it really is a massive thing it is. like mm-hmm. right yeah. for, for somebody huge. who because we're not just talking about uh an intellectual principle it's a it's it's a um, an expression of the nervous system mm-hmm. right Right. It's right. about this auto-regulatory 
function. Yeah. And now we're talking about moving into interactive mm -hmm. regulation. So it's a real energy change, yeah. not just a conceptual change, right? right? Totally. right? Yeah. And a complete different activation of different areas of the brain and oh, yeah. behaviors, mm -hmm. paying attention to things we're not used to, right. which is also very fatiguing. And, yeah, uh, right. Energy intensive. Right. Much yeah. like, so you know, auto, right. than just yeah. being on your own. Right. Yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, In a way. Absolutely. there's a stress well, to that too, yeah. but it's not registered as that. More yeah. oxygen, more glucose yeah. being used to yeah. interact with another person. Mm -hmm. It's not energy conserving to right. interact with another person. It's energy conserving to, you know, be in your yeah. own, right. uh, your own space, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and yet we know that human beings don't do well that way. Right. They don't. We don't do well if we are too alone. There's a long-term cost to that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's Even a long short term, it feels like, oh, this is so much better. I don't have to deal mm -hmm. with you or people. Right. Yeah. But we know that it's there's a long-term cost to the immune system. There's a long-term yeah. cost to our mental well-being. Right. You know, people who don't have healthy relationships experience more pain. Mm -hmm. You know, they right. they lose their memory more quickly. Right. Um, their mood goes down as they yeah. get older. So there are all these health benefits, not yeah. just not to mention you making know, better decisions about your all the complex things we face. We discuss. For a long, how should what about this diet? Should we do that? Let's do mm -hmm. some research, and it's like having multiple minds yeah. working on problem. a problem. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. going to come up with a better. Yeah, I don't know about that. I heard something different, and it's sooner or later you arrive at a much better solution than yes. the phantoms of my own mind can talk me into about just about <laughs> anything. You know? Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. right. So I think in order for people to like really get that, like on a personal level, to get the value of of interacting mm -hmm. when they're not oriented that way yeah it's it very often what i see in my clinical experience is that people have to have really really suffered mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. great deal mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. from lack of that yeah you know yeah to have like a come to jesus where they realize that that they're um they're missing out or they're they're just not um they're too alone or they're they're just they're suffering and a lot of it is the loneliness and the isolation mm -hmm. yeah yeah. You know? yeah that pain is right yeah it needs to be pretty high right yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. but if you think about it well, humans have evolved that way i mean why are we left with these incredible brains that are so geared towards relationships so much of our brain mm -hmm. one way or another is focused on the guy are you looking at me do you like me am i going to yeah. be okay here how about these right. people over there yep. so much geared toward if it weren't important and essential for our survival yeah you know, life over millions of years has produced us as human beings to thrive, and that's the best way for us to survive. Yeah. 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 And yeah. so we need to learn how to work together. <laughs> yes, which is exactly. very hard yeah. for people. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the download so many people got about yeah. that. Yeah. And we didn't right. learn, we just got shown or got told or ignored or. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a big yeah. shift. I mean, we both, I feel like for me, I. The, the meditation and the just doing it on my own for so long before that mm -hmm. um, and being in pain about that, you know, 10 years of failed relationships or just distance and like this blows. There was a part of me deeper down that knew like I wanted to partner, you know, and I wanted to not feel so alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Cool. So we have a lot of ideas um, just in our Western culture in general, but also I think specifically in spiritual communities about mm. um, that basically amount to how like dependency needs or uh, attachment attachment right mm -hmm. it's like a Don't bad be attached. word yeah. right yeah. freedom from yeah. attachment i mean isn't right. that yeah. what it's all about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um and so there's a lot of uh shame around you know um needing another person for distress relief mm. or needing repair or right. um, the kinds of capacities that we know we now know people need to be able to have those things online in their relationship mm -hmm. in order to be successful and from a psychological perspective we really look at those things the ability for somebody to express a need and get that need met mm -hmm. in a short amount of time to get it met appropriately and not have to pay for it yeah. Right. That's right. that's a developmental accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in other words, in a in a healthy attachment bond between a mother and child, that's that's 
health. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Totally. Um, and yet, if we look at that from the perspective of many spiritual schools, would say, well, you shouldn't turn to another person. Yeah. Right. For, to, to get a need met inward. You yeah. should be looking at your inward or a transcendent source. And not just spiritual yeah. people. Yes. Like this source. is kind of the cultural still the kind of right. way yeah. right. we do things. It's yeah. like, no, you don't really need other right. people. Like you exactly. gotta figure that out on right. your own. Yeah. And so what's really important I think in terms of making that shift from a more uh, auto regulatory, more more self centric perspective into an interactive perspective is understanding that that um, that is that idea that you should be able to do it on your own is an attachment adaptation. Mm -hmm. That's that's avoidance. Right. Mm -hmm. That's avoidant attachment. Mm -hmm. Right. It it came. It was born out of an attachment. Yes. Right. Yeah. Or maybe there are some cultural origins. If I look at the history of Tibetan Buddhism, if you right. live way up in the Himalayas. Your father worked all day just herding yaks just to survive. There probably wasn't a lot of warmth. Uh, uh, what what Absolutely. what about this cultural situation? Should I really invest in just you know milking yaks all day or suffering in the cold, being alone, staring off into the mountains? Maybe turning into a meditation system and a, a community or a, joining a monastery was actually a great idea, right? Based on that culture at that time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you guys wanted to run off to a monastery, how, how are your kids going to do? You know, right. <laughs> yeah. you have a different set yeah. of options. And, Absolutely. You know, right. Yeah. In right. the modern age, this is a pretty good world to be invested in, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm loving sitting with you guys here. Yeah. This is pretty nice. This is nice. Yeah. <laughs> totally. We want to be here. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't <laughs> need to get away to some transcendent thing. You know? It's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I it's can true. have this conversation by myself to the listener or I yeah. can have you three here yeah. with me and it's like so much richer, right? Yeah. 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 Right. Um, just to play devil's advocate for a minute, just for fun on the spiritual side. No, of we love that. <laughs> um, so I, I was a part of the, um, thank you. Do I need to turn my eyebrows? You do. Again? You do. Okay. Maybe you can help me with that. She's really, she usually does help me with that. Of course. Yeah. And right? she's looking after me. The grooming. Right? Yeah. The grooming. The co-grooming. <laughs> um, when I was doing a lot of ayahuasca and sitting in circles with a shaman, the instruction was if you were in pain, because the it's a very much in, like a Tibetan Buddhist situation where the tradition came from the jungle, right? Where that was maybe more okay to like just sit with yourself and like deal. But in like modern Western culture, I the instruction if I'm really struggling in a ceremony is drink more medicine. It's yep. between you and the grandmother, you and the medicine, right? It's not like, oh shit, you're in a pain bad place let me try to facilitate you through this there's a little bit of that but and yet there's also a lot of value at times in just being with my own pain and discomfort and not needing anyone to come in and tell me how to get through it or you know hold me through like is would you say that that's true like yeah. i'm just curious what you guys think about the time yes. and a place for that kind of instruction from the teacher or just from life it's like no I'm, this is mine i gotta be with this Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, so we I guess the way I think about this is is more through the lens again, through the lens of the nervous system and attachment and so forth. And so when people, you know, there's a big difference between what they call auto regulation and self regulation. Mm -hmm. And I think that speaks to what you're talking about, like like being with yourself and and being able to soothe your own distress or manage, self, manage yourself, mm -hmm. you know, calm yourself down, um, or breathe more deeply, or whatever that might be in terms of self-regulation, we all need those skills. Mm -hmm. We need those skills to be successful as individuals and in relationship. Mm -hmm. So nobody's dissing being with yourself yeah. and feeling yourself right. and, and, and learning to work with yourself. Um, but the where the problem comes in, I think, is when that becomes a substitute for being in relationship. The only thing I know how mm -hmm. to do is take care of myself over here. I don't. I do that exclusively. And I'm addicted to that in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't maybe not know how to do this other thing. I don't yeah. know how to do this other thing. Yeah. Right. And so I sort of glorify this thing mm -hmm. as being the way, the way mm -hmm. when it's really a, a cover up for the fact that I don't, don't actually know how to do, how to right. do anything else. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that's mm -hmm. an issue. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. And then the cultural yeah. context yes. can support the way. 
exactly. being better and yeah. kind of collude with my really defense almost against this right this partner this collaborative but if if we also look at what alan shore has to say it's kind of an illusion to imagine like oh i i handle things myself i've always handled things myself Mm -hmm. well we all have a period of utter dependency as in infants where you're internalizing care from others whether it's food or anything else that uh, the capacity to regulate yourself is actually born in relationship. There's no other way that he, no one yeah. is, just pops out of the womb and like, hey, I'm good. Right. Thanks, mom. You know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, we're so dependent yeah. for so long. Yeah, the and so it's so internal, it's so embedded. Mm-hmm. And this is what Dan, um, Daniel uh, Siegel speaks to also, is it's, it's so embedded in our, our minds, our, our our sense of self is so embedded in relationship. Right. It's just it's it's an illusion. It's a fantasy to talk about yeah. this independent autonomous self Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. you know exists Mm -hmm. apart from other beings especially humans yeah Yeah. because like our sense of self has been so informed by our relational experiences yeah but we don't it's not totally conscious it doesn't occur that way and and if a person just to come back to the auto regulation because i want you to speak to that is if a person has good again interactive regulation growing up then they know how to be with their experience right that's right that's the self-regulation so what's just for the listener to delineate that between that and auto regulation. Um, well, self regulation is uh, one way of looking at that is that self regulation is in service of the relationship. Mm-hmm. So, like, we're having this conversation, and I might have like lots and lots of ideas that I want to get out, but I'm also listening to you at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, I need to practice actually clearing my mind and just being present <laughs> with you, mm-hmm. not like planning the next thing that I'm going to say. Yeah. So that's a form of self-regulation, but it's in service of our relationship, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, which is very different than me being by myself and um, doing something to regulate my myself, which is kind of more dissociative mm-hmm. and more sort of on the level of, it's, it's a pleasurable dissociative type of space that I yeah. go into by myself. So maybe you'd be sitting here spacing out yeah. and just thinking about your cool ideas or like, whoa, about this thought and that thought. Yes. But then now you've lost connection with us. That's right. Okay. And people can auto-regulate even when they're in a conversation yes. with another person. We see that all the time right. as couples therapists, right? right? They look, right. you have people, a couple mm-hmm. looking at each other in each other's eyes. They're mm-hmm. not actually, it's like they're sort of meditating yeah. while yeah. they're with the other person. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to be good at, at picking that out because mm-hmm. they can look, you know, a lot of, all of this is going on kind of yeah. inside. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And That's I was going to say feel. also, you, mm-hmm. even when we're what we could call self-regulating or, or doing it by ourselves, like I'm thinking a lot of times, like sometime around two o'clock, many days I'm home just working like crazy. I'm like, God, I just feel stressed or anything. And what do I think? I think, oh, I'm going to have dinner with her later. We're going to relax. We'll watch some TV. It's going to be nice. So I'm using a representation of a relationship to calm mm-hmm. myself down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's really the way it works a lot. No one sure. thinks, like, I'm just going to go off by myself. I'll go for a walk in the woods. Usually people are thinking, you know, even if it's their pets, yeah. kids, uh, they're going to watch sports. There's something that they're, they're thinking about, like, I'm, how I'm going to relax in relationship one way or another, even if it's alone. But they'll, there's something about other people. Yeah. yeah. Very few. I'm yeah, going to sit there and just stare into space. Right. I you think know, people yeah. fantasize about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I bet you they're. Uh, yeah. yeah. I bet yeah. you they. When it comes down to it, though, there's something that they're engaging in. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I I agree with that. That yeah. that happens. Yeah. I think people also like have a fantasy of oh I'm going to see my family later and that'll be good and then they come in and they realize it's not what they thought and I just have heard enough stories of that too. Like, oh, I, I want to, I look forward to seeing you, but then I see you and it's not good. And so it kind of reinforces this, like, I want this more relational thing, but mm-hmm. I don't know how to do it very well. So I guess I'll just go back to being by myself. That's, yeah. that's I'm not mm-hmm. really happy there anymore, but it's more predictable or more, con- more under my control than, mm-hmm. than you and I. Um, but that's at least people, I think when people are there, they're at least starting to feel what you talked about, that sense of, it's lonely over here. I don't like it over here. It's stressful. It's kind of cold and quiet. It's familiar. I can do it, but I'd rather have something that's more, you know, more nourishing. Right. Yeah. You know, more alive. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, and until you have an yeah. experience of that, it's yeah. going to be hard to, yeah. to know. Like I, mm-hmm. I just go back to my comfort mm-hmm. zone. Right. And, and I'm going to say, I'm probably, I know we don't have a huge amount of time left, but there's something... Mm-hmm about learning how to do it coaching each other yeah you know I, i'll say we say to a lot of each other could you say this thing to me or be this way or i want you just to listen to me because we don't always know how to do it right yeah <laughs> so it's like it totally. isn't just like you know be what i exactly I would say what you i want don't to always know how to do it i think he's actually very good uh-huh. yeah <laughs> he makes he makes my job easy yeah. Yeah. Nice. that's good thanks ted that's that's good. Good. yeah but if we're growing too like that they change like I I think I have her figured out and I'm like, okay, I kind of know this thing to say and the thing to do. And then yeah. a year later, it's different. And then I'm like, yeah. you need to change that. Yeah, I was trying something recently and she's yeah. like, that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah, but you're curious, you're paying attention. And I was you're like, looking, okay. You're, you're looking right. at the yeah. response. Is this working what I'm saying? Right. You know? right. Oh, but you're not. saying that it used to work? Yeah. You used to like it, yeah. but you don't like Things it now. Things evolve. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay yeah. that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Because, you know, with attachment, like therapy one of the things we often talk about is is that people usually people are actually very predictable Mm -hmm. and and so you know most people have three or four things that just make them feel fantastic Mm -hmm. right you know and if it made them feel fantastic you know 20 years ago it's still going to make them feel fantastic Mm -hmm. 20 years Mm -hmm. from now because we sort of have those uh things that are you know those things are true yeah I, Mm -hmm. i think we're talking about like we're getting more micro around uh-huh. little little statements or like words, repair like statements repair and statements. And yeah. I see, and I see. Because mm-hmm. um, that is true. There's there's things that definitely, if we're down, we're down about a few things. If we're if we're up, you know, it's it's because we feel these certain things that are really just important to who we are as right. people. And right. and then it's sort of just more the that it is more in the repair the repair place that I feel like we keep getting just better. Yes. Just more honed in on, yeah, that, that was good for a while. Now actually let's be even more. Yeah. We, we have that here, the list yeah. of yeah. things that we're working on. Like yeah. I might have yeah. four things. Let's yeah. add this fifth one here. Yeah. Like how, how, let's talk about a long-term plan to make it better. Yeah. Right. Not only just making it better in the moment, but I want to have some discussion right. of what we're going to do. That'll feel supportive. Right. Because right. now we're facing a new challenge. Yeah. yeah. There's always yeah. things arising. That yeah. as we're shifting as individuals, as our kids are growing and developing, mm. it's there's so many variables. Yeah. 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 So one thing, I, I don't know Go if we ahead. have to stop. I'm just going to yeah. say we're winding down, yeah. so okay, maybe we'll, we'll down. start moving in that direction, but, but bring yeah. that. Okay. I mean, I'm just noticing, like, as we're having this conversation, how much um, there's just a lot of, like, self-assertion going on like people Mm. saying like yeah we're talking about what we need and how we're you know leaning in Mm -hmm. to understand that and and refining that Mm -hmm. and getting these needs met and you kind of get this whole sense of a certain um uh capacity that is so important to like being a full person Mm -hmm. in my opinion which is which is being able to like express um, express needs, express wishes, and mm-hmm. um, and be responded to. Yeah, yeah. and that and, it, it, that and it's a totally normal, healthy thing to do. Like we didn't even just just like, hey, Jason, can you hand me that cup or you know, right? Yeah, um, <laughs> like yeah. Just that it's as normal every, as that. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that that is what has is often shamed or or devalued in mm-hmm. a lot of um spiritual contexts mm-hmm. is you know again this idea like you shouldn't need you shouldn't need stuff if somebody hurts you you should go and work on it by yourself mm-hmm. like you know what you know we've seen a number of spiritual teachers mm-hmm. who you know problems with your relationship problems with your relationship time to go meditate exactly yeah. right. i got that so many times back yeah. to the cushion right yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, exactly I want, you know this girlfriend i broke up with her you know back to the cushion exactly yeah. Just take go find cushion. your partner and fix it how's that yeah. For yeah. meditation yeah. right yeah. right <laughs> you know, actually make amends and, yeah. yeah yeah so that's you can i just i'm just mm-hmm. struck by like as we're having this conversation just how much that's not what's going on here like yeah in your relationship no. in our relationship yeah, no. yeah. yeah. right or, no. and how much it becomes then if we have to assert ourselves in the world make our way take on new challenges yeah. having that internal support it's just it's just it's mm-hmm. just people i don't what i have to manufacture to kind of get myself up to do to get yeah. out on a global stage and all that 
versus the support or not versus but you know the the, the, the it, when it's supported by someone who knows you and loves you mm-hmm. and yeah. is just there and wrecking like oh you must be that's going to be a big thing they're just in there with you right yeah. that's right uh, yeah and, and then when you fall yeah. down out there you have a place yeah. to come back exactly oh. i blew that one that thing was a total yes. disaster you know yes. <laughs> yeah 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 it's huge so if you, yeah. as we wind down here, um, just maybe one piece of parting wisdom for the listener here. Um, we've been talking about spirituality, our needs, um, attachment, and regulating ourselves and each other. What, uh, just, I know we could take another half an hour to really unpack much more, but if you were to just offer some nugget, a tip, mm-hmm. or a reminder for the listener about what we've been talking about, what would it be? Yeah, um, uh, a big part of spiritual realization is being able to um, be in touch with what you need and on all levels and be able to express that need and get that met, to actually harness whatever mm-hmm. the supplies, whatever uh, uh, relationships, whatever experiences you need in order to meet your individual needs as a person Mm -hmm. um that's that's healthy and good and needs to be part of whatever it is that your um spiritual path you're you're a part of and if you feel if you see that you're in um a spiritual school where that basic functioning is being shut down in some way or you're being shamed for that, it's really important to look at that and ask yourself if that's really supportive Mm -hmm. of your real development. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, huge. Yeah, well well said. said. And and I would uh, uh, maybe even go a step further saying, um, maybe we should change the paradigm is the more you grow as a human being, the needier you get. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because, you know, you you just, uh, um, to, to, Uh, if you want to support other people, which is a lot what we're doing with our online ventures and so on, yeah. and, and contacting people all over the world and saying, hey, I'm going to help you, this has to be, so I, I become more needy because right. I'm taking on more responsibility. You guys mm-hmm. probably That's have true. experienced the same thing with kids. Yeah. You can't just, you know, like, oh, I'm just yeah. going to suck it up and I'll do everything. Like, good, like, yeah, maybe yeah. for a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And Rubbing and to back. acknowledge that, like there's some notion in, in a lot of spiritual schools that would like you reach a certain point of development where you no longer need those, you exactly. know, just you transcend, you know, right. yeah, transcend it. <laughs> and we've just Not found so it to be exactly the opposite, right? Yeah, and I can I if I can add something mm-hmm. to that. I mean, we didn't get in. I know we're trying to wrap this up, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <Trying>. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the I, I think people are are afraid. Codependency is a word that comes up a lot, right, yeah. in these discussions. Yes. That people are oh, really yeah. afraid that what we're talking about yeah. is like I can't. I need you. I can't do without you. And and that's um, that's not what we're talking about. Right. Wait, that's not what you mean when you say sure. you're getting more needy, because the fact is, if you know, God forbid, uh, we one of us died we would be totally screwed right we would be Mm -hmm. but you know we would survive you know it's not like we just do you know what i'm saying so well it's not a regression um, in needs like you know you don't have to feed me and change my diaper it isn't like you just regress (laughs) but the need uh no but the need to serve others and think about my god what about these people and i got a group with african coaches you know, and they're, 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 you know, facing all this stuff. Uh, if you want me to take on that burden to help people, I need something from you. So it's more need in a sense, like the more responsibility you take on, totally. the mm-hmm. more support you need to meet that responsibility. Yeah. Nice. Absolutely. There's just no other way. Right. right? Yeah. yeah. So if you're growing and developing as an individual in your personal professional life, you're going to need more from your closest relationships, your partner in order to, to do that. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I felt like that with mothering too. Like it was the, after we had our second, it was like when I got really faced with how needy I was and how little I could do by myself and how I didn't even want him to like go anywhere, like leave the house at all. It was like, I'm like, you're leaving? Like how long? And when are you be back? Because <laughs> yeah. I just really felt how, even if he was just in the house, I was better. And I just, that was like a huge, mm-hmm. uh, it was very humbling, I think for me, because 
I liked being able to do a lot on my own and not need too much. That always felt really empowering, quote unquote empowering. And then it was through realizing that's actually, I'm so much better when he's here right. and with me and doing this with me and, and appreciating me for these things and but because also you had the responsibility of two kids, of two kids. like you right. know, as, yeah. as, as, did he. Yeah. as did he and mm-hmm. i think by it was um yeah just really i really saw how deeply intertwined we are in a good way like just how actually good that was for me yeah. was huge mm-hmm. and that's that was a big shift it still is yeah right it still is. It's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> still, I haven't, I haven't gone back. Yeah. 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 Like we want to do back. this together. You know? It is a, it is a developmental yeah. move forward. I guess I just wanted to say that. Like it is, as I grow and develop, that's that's where I've gone is more relational. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. felt really, I I feel more mature and more adult and more myself because of that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Beautiful. Well. Yeah. Um, where can people find you? I know, you know, but you both have your own independent ventures. You've got a class that's online, I think. Right. Um, maybe you guys could talk about some of those options. And I know I'm going to follow up with you to have you teach a class to our relationship coaches. Yes. Because we mentioned that briefly. Yeah, yeah wonderful. Think you'd be good at yeah. that. So. so, yeah, where can folks find you guys? Oh, uh, the well, next? they can find my uh, coaching work at uh, personalpowercoaching.com. Mm hmm. And um, I work with a limited number of individual people, but I offer online classes, uh, basically helping people who like that, who are taking on more responsibility in the mm-hmm. world. How do you learn to manage your nervous system? Mm. Um, and we do a lot of work. Yeah, some of it is, is about your own self, but a lot of it is done in community to practice. It's yeah. like, okay, yeah. you, you have a little fear of speaking in front of people. Well, let's put three of the people in the group right in front of you here. Start talking. And mm-hmm. we just, you know, and like, oh, I feel nervous and just learning how to manage your nervous system in progressively more challenging situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Both, you know, sometimes you have to do it alone. Sometimes it's in relationship. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So it's a real yeah. great privilege to work cool. with people all over the world. Um, and the people I'm encountering, you know, it's a lot of, I'm sure you've had the same thing. You don't know where people are going to show up or why they're interested in what you're doing and it's just uh, it's, it's fascinating beautiful work to meet people and work with them and help yes. them and, and it helps me too yeah, i grow uh, the more responsibility i take on for all uh, people i work with um it brings us new challenges so yeah yeah, uh, yeah. i just want to endorse my husband as a <laughs> fantastic coach and teacher and um it's just people just love love working with him and, and feel so supported by him and um uh, awesome. So and, and there's something about also because one of my the first book I wrote was called Instinctual Intelligence. There's something liberating about being able to talk about what you feel and what like the quirky things yeah. we usually hide. Yeah. Like actually, I'm kind of nervous here. I feel tight or queasy mm-hmm. or uh, yeah. mm-hmm. you know afraid. All the things yeah. that we go through. And the same thing that she does, you know, kind of exposing or, or talking about. Let's let's take relational dynamics and talk about what we do instead of just burying it. Yeah. It's a bit the same thing, learning to know your body and your gut level instincts better. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Um, yeah. 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 Um, so I have my private practice where I mm-hmm. see uh, couples, and I also do see individuals as well for trauma and attachment and work. And here in Colorado. This is in, yeah. Not virtual, right? Uh, no, I'm not. I don't do virtual counseling, but I, but I have my uh, in-person private practice in Louisville, mm-hmm. Colorado, which is mm-hmm. a suburb of Boulder. And, um, and then I have my um, therapist training institute, which is helping therapists become mm-hmm. better therapists. Yeah. And the focus of that is uh, currently on helping therapists with their most difficult clients. Mm-hmm. So we're working a lot with, um, we've been working a lot with personality disorders um, and um, providing therapists with in-depth training on that. Yeah, yeah. And also um, we're gonna be moving into kind of more of the neurobiology and the, and the nervous system aspects of working with difficult clients. Mm-hmm. So those courses are currently live here in Boulder and are, I'm in the process of bringing all of those online and I'm actually going to have a um, program starting online uh, in February. Um, so people can contact me through my Right now, the website's in development for that, but they can contact me through my 
um, my uh, private practice, which is couplecounselingboulder.com. Okay. Cool. If they're interested in joining either the upcoming Boulder group, which is live starting in January, um, or the online program starting in February. Awesome. awesome. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We'll put those links in the uh, yeah, great. show yeah. notes. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Well, guys, thanks so much yeah. for just your vast experience and your yeah. connection, which is also really evident here as we sit with you. It's yeah, really beautiful to see you guys together <laughs> mm-hmm. and sharing your love and your and wisdom. Can I say one thing? Appreciation yeah. for both of you, uh, folks. This is the real deal. I mean, they are a real couple in a beautiful house with beautiful yeah. kids practicing <laughs> what they preach every day. Uh, yeah. And um, they've made us feel welcome. And um, yeah, it's a, we're happy to make friends yeah. with you and, and build this you know, both what we do independently, but uh, it's nice to uh, see the proof is in the pudding and, and we experience that as a real living thing in this in this house right mm. now. So mm. thank yeah. you. Yeah, thanks. it's been really a pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. Us mm. too. Yeah, thanks, Ellen. Mm-hmm. Whew, okay. I could have kept going on that discussion. There's so much to say there. I had even more questions for them. Perhaps you did too. So here's your action step. Number one, go check out Ted and Gabrielle if you are interested in following up with them. I always encourage that. Ted's website, personalpowercoaching.com. Gabrielle's, couplescounselingboulder.com. And uh, those are all in the show notes as well. Okay, wonderful people. Another action step is I want you to look around in your life and maybe it's not spirituality, but for you, Where in your life, what context, what environment are you in on a regular basis that does not have or promote relational development? Maybe it's your place of employment. Maybe it's your family system when you went home for the holidays. They just don't get it. People don't understand this language and they're they're really struggle. They're into developing themselves around money or work or their career, and yet they are still kind of kids when it comes to interpersonal upset, conflict, fighting, you know? So uh, find out, examine quickly your life, just scan around and then make a choice. Do you want to be a relational leader there? Do you want to step in and try to help? Have you tried to help and it didn't go well? Either way, are you willing to take your seat as the relational leader? Anyone who's learning about relationships becomes a relational leader. And if you want to get really serious, you come to the relationship school. And our whole course is designed to help you be a relational leader in your life. And it's not just, it's not even something you have to try. It will just happen at the end of nine months. People will be looking to you like, dude, holy shit, what happened to you? That's what's going to happen, okay? So hopefully we'll see you in there. Right, relationshipschool.com forward slash DPIR. DPIR, Deep Psychology of Intimate Relationships. All right, more fun stuff coming up this year in 2019 here on the podcast. Feel free to always give us feedback. Just send us an email, let us know. Leave us a review on iTunes. Join the Smart Couple Facebook group, and we'll talk soon. Hey, thanks so much for listening relationship school fans and smart couple listeners please subscribe to this youtube channel all right do us a favor subscribe share one of these videos with a friend all right we want to help the planet get their act together around relationships and you are one of them so thank you